Coming out has changed my style a lot. Well, actually, I take that back. It hasn't changed my style a lot, it's just changed how I feel about my style. I think I just feel differently about it, so I'm wearing my clothes a little bit differently and I feel better about myself, so I, I feel like I get a lot of favorable response to the way I present myself because people are ultimately responding to like my good vibes, not my shoes. I was kind of a chubby child. People called me chubby and fat, like to my face or teased me about it. Between the ages of like eight and 13, I carried around what people said was extra weight, which now I look back and I'm like, whatever, that's how I looked. Like, why was that deemed not okay? Like, why was that extra weight? That was just my weight. Like I was on Weight Watchers in sixth grade. My size nev never dictated my enjoyment of life unless I let it and you know I sidelined myself a bunch of times from things that I'm now really sad about. It's been a long journey to get out of disordered eating. I think the moment that I was like woo like now that I'm IDing as like a queer person out in the world like it just gave it just underscored the freedom I was feeling about other things like being able to just dress for comfort or mm -hmm. my own pleasure. Coming out as a queer person helped me free myself from the male gaze. My instincts are not to dress in like form-fitting, traditionally like very feminine shapes. I don't like to buy new stuff if I can help it. So much of it is a re reiteration of something that was produced decades before and I would prefer to just go find the original version that's probably better made. And most new clothing is produced in ways that are not okay for human rights or the environment. This is a suit that I found in a vintage store in Williamsburg. And I wear it to so many things. Like it's just such a good basic go-to. These are my Nike shocks that I am very obsessed with. I have a few wow. pairs. I also think I wear a lot of things that are conversational. Who knows where this was produced, who produced it, but I saw it at Beacons, had to have it. Funny story, when I came home and opened it up, there was a pair, there was like a thong underwear in it and like some, like a lip gloss and like just various things that made it feel like it was someone's overnight bag or something. I, I like the story behind things. I like to imagine where things have been. Rihanna, Beyonce, and the Obamas. Those were the people that made the cut. And I'm not mad. I've had this purse for over 15 years. This purse became sort of like a trademark for me. Like the, the girl with the log purse, like it was just really noticeable. But also I just like it. I don't know why, like I'm obsessed with this purse and I will never throw it away. I also really like fuzzy textures. This is a very like 90s moment to me. It reminds me of when I was a teen. I have a bi-level cut right now that I really like. Two very distinct levels of hair that are like kind of blunt. And then sometimes I just put these barrettes from the Dwayne Reed. Tears are healing. I like to just remind myself that it's okay to cry and there's beauty in showing emotion. I don't wear makeup. I like I brush my brows with like a brow brush. I used to be very into like a eyeliner look mm -hmm. and I did a lot of red lip in my time. And anytime there was like an event, a press event or a, you know, a fancy event, like I always had my makeup done and like would do a full face. And like looking back at those photos, I'm just like, who is she? Why is she hiding? Why does she look 20 years older than she is? You know, a turning point for me was sometime in 2016, I went to some event that I hadn't been planning on going to. And I also had definitely not planned on any photos being taken of me. And I just sort of was caught unawares, you know, but it was like a full on step and repeat. And I wasn't wearing makeup. And I remember seeing those photos and, and then thinking like, oh, like I look like myself there. The binary is, is killing us, you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, having to put everything in these categories of right and wrong, male, female, it's, it's not helping us. And I think for me, a lot of that philosophy was underscored in my early years in an evangelical Christian space. I went to a Christian school and I was really involved in churches and I think a lot of people had really good intentions, but I think the ultimate uh, damage that it did was just, you know, p trapping me in like a binary of things being right or wrong. Wanting to like look uh, appropriate for every space, whatever that means. And then that translating to me being totally paralyzed, like getting ready to like leave the house because either, oh, I don't have the perceived right thing for this space or this event. I mean, I still struggle with that. 
or I don't look pretty enough. I worked in television for a really long time before I made High Maintenance, and I read a lot. I've read hundreds of scripts, hundred you know, hundreds of half-hour scripts, and if there is definitely like a structure and a formula that people think you should adhere to. It's cool to live in a time now where you know the rules are people are wanting to break rules more and people are appreciating the rule breaking and I think high maintenance kind of does that we sometimes we feel like a traditional tv show but for the most part we're not concerning ourselves with like the a story b story c story or like a a cast of many that you're following every week we sort of live in that space of um trying to give you surprise every week if we're if we're doing it right